Hello and welcome back to Focus on the Arts. I am Paul Kreider, Dean of the College of Creative Arts at West Virginia University in Morgantown. Our show attempts to excite our audience about new and interesting arts events and practices occurring within the university and also within the state of West Virginia. This show serves to inform you about some of the wonderful creative arts programs at WVU. Today we focus on the dance program at WVU and here today with me are Yoav Kadar, who is head of the dance program and assistant professor of dance, and General Hambrick, who is also General MacArthur Hambrick, <laughs> sorry General, uh, who has recently came to WVU as an assistant professor of dance and started in, uh, in August. So happy to have you both on the show today. Thank Thanks so much for coming on. So let's, let's just kick it off right now a little bit and just talk about um, male dancers. Okay, and how does a young man start to get interested in dance? And how did you start, Yoav, in your well, career? I, I started through folk dance. Okay. And uh, it was an afternoon activity, and everyone folk dances. I'm originally from Israel, so uh, there everyone folk dances after school. Uh, I started fourth grade, mm -hmm. and I guess I caught the bug, and eventually in high school got into a folk dance uh, ensemble and felt what it was like on stage. And I was very active physically in sports, so it kind of a combination of sports and being on stage, dance is a perfect answer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then I came to this country to study dance as a, an academic subject um, and saw modern dance here and fell in love with it and said that's what I want to do when I grow up. Um, mm -hmm. And the rest is kind of history. I've mm -hmm. enjoyed it. And, um, mm -hmm. It's been physical so far. Hopefully, we'll carry on for a while still. So, as long as the body uh, carries me, body through holds it. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's something that you really have to be cognizant of through throughout your right. career as yeah. a as a dancer and also as a teacher of dance. Yeah, yeah. You, you basically it's it's like a professional athlete. You mm -hmm. have to take a sure. care of your body all the time. It's, sure. You know, muscle memory and rehearsals and mm -hmm. aches and pains and fractures and, and bruises. Um, and we constantly carry our, our instrument with us. We can't uh, set it aside at the end of the day. So you have to take good care of it. I know a little bit about that myself. Yeah, yeah. there you <laughs> go. <laughs> exactly the same. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, General MacArthur Hambrick. <laughs> and you started dancing when? I did. Uh, I, our stories are sort of similar because we both started late. And mm -hmm. I, I went to school, to TCU actually, to be a fashion design major and took a PE ballet course. And my teacher said, you look like you could be a dancer. And they offered me a scholarship if I changed my major <laughs> to dance. <laughs> and so the rest, is I, history. the rest is history. That's great. And they sent me away to New York in the summer times to get intensive training. So mm -hmm. I was always in the studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 19. Okay. So let's talk a little about the professional career as dancers. So General, you, you spent a lot of time on Broadway. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I did. Uh, after I graduated from school, I tried to do the concert dance because that's what I, after I was introduced to dance, that's what I really want to do is do concert dancing. But it didn't pan out. So um, a show by the name of Cats <laughs> came through Dallas, Texas, where I'm from. I mean, Fort Worth, Texas, where I'm from. But it came through Dallas, and I went over and auditioned, and I got mm -hmm. the show. And that's kind of how my Broadway career started. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just after that, you, you work for the same casting directors. And if they like you, they cast you in show after show. And that's kind of the way it ended up for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fascinating. How about you, Yoav, in terms of professional? Modern I, dance was your focus? Right. I went through the concert dance uh, route. And um, I was fortunate enough after school, after uh, my undergraduate, to be offered a a position in uh, one of the modern dance companies in New York and um, I didn't have to work after that which is very fortunate for a dancer. Um, mm -hmm. I think male dancers have it a little easier than uh, female dancers because we're less of us. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to dance with several leading modern dance companies in, in New York City and, and traveled around the world with them and had a wonderful career. Um, so, uh, and then also got to work with ind individual choreographers, which is fun because then you're more of a freelance dancer mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. get to do different styles and work with different people, uh, which I always enjoyed and, and it stretched me as a performer too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now last year we had a master class on campus with some um, dancers, choreographers from that show, So You, uh, think, so you think, think You Can Dance. <laughs> right. 
And it was interesting to watch them work with the students. And they talked a lot about um, being able to just quickly adapt and do what you're being told to do. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that within three, four, five minutes, <laughs> you're gone. Yeah. I mean, is that really the way it is in, in the Broadway world? I mean, you've, you've been working with these people over and over again. There's got to be at some point where, well, we know he can do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how does that work? Well, not, um, I don't know. It, it, it's different with each show. I mean, like something like So You Think You Can Dance. I mean, it's very intricate, um, you know, contemporary, more... Um, I, yeah, I also think, you know, the, the amount of people wanting to get on the show is so large that they have mm -hmm. to have that kind of a, a, a the mentality, mentality yeah, policy yeah. In, in terms of who's on, who's off. If you take too much time, you'll never get through everyone. Mm -hmm. So it depends what you're auditioning for, who you're auditioning for. Some choreographers, they'll take a week before they decide. Um, and some will take even longer and say, okay, we'll get these last 10. We only need one, but we'll let you work with a company for about two weeks and see, mm -hmm. take it from there. Mm -hmm. So it changes. In the industry, uh, more competitive gigs, uh, they have to decide really quick because, as mm -hmm. you know, time is money and, and they have to decide and there's so many people auditioning, wanting the job. So um, you have to use some kind of mm -hmm. perimeter. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk each of you real quick about that moment that we, we all have where we <laughs> go, I think it's time that I want to teach. <laughs> and so when, when did that happen for you, General? Mine actually happened um, in New York. I did my last off-Broadway show, actually. It was a show called mm. Garden of Earthly Delights, choreographed by uh, uh, Martha Clark, mm -hmm. who's pretty renowned in New York. And, uh, and I just, after doing that show, it was such a high, and I felt like I had reached, this is the pinnacle of dance for me. And I, and I thought to myself, I go to auditions in New York now, and I have people coming up to me you know, when they were in high school and they saw me in shows on Broadway, <laughs> <laughs> I say, okay, it's time. It's time. Okay. It's time. And that's when, actually, uh, you all told me about um, uh, the program where I went to school in University of Washington, at the University of Washington. That's where you got your MFA. Yeah, right? where I got my MFA. And I remember him telling me about that school. And I say, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to school and then I'm going to get a job at a university. So through the dance world, you two knew each other prior to WVU yeah. experience, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. dance world, even though we are both, you know, come from different backgrounds, dance world is pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's how we, how we uh, met. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when was that moment for you that, that light bulb went off? And actually, when I was still a student, I, um, yeah. I went to actually South America with one of my teachers from Juilliard who invited me to follow him and, and study with him during the summer break. And uh, we were touring Argentina and he was teaching and uh, we got to this small place and the studio and they never had modern dance and he asked you, me if I mind if I... Uh, teach a class in modern mm -hmm. dance. I said, sure. So I started teaching what I was taught at school, and that was 25 years ago. And So you I did I both concurrently stopped. for a little yes, bit. Yes, I yeah. didn't stop. Right. Um, and I continued teaching when I was dancing professionally or touring companies. Someone always asks mm -hmm. for someone mm -hmm. to teach a master class. And then I just continued, and I taught more and more and more and uh, all, all over the world, and it's been fabulous and I, I knew I didn't want to give that up um, it's for me for me teaching is like performing you stand in front of a class everyone's watching you God forbid if you make a mistake they'll let you know <laughs> um, so and it's very rewarding it's very rewarding and satisfying so um, I, I love it I enjoy it so you basically asked answered my next question which was you know why teach dance you know, I mean how about for yeah. you general why what this is your first semester you taught before I uh, did. At another institution yes. before you went, you got your, your terminal degree, your MFA, but now right. you're at WVU, your first semester. What's turning you on about teaching dance? Uh, well, I, um, I feel like I, I owe it to some, I mean, to some extent mm -hmm. because I didn't dance at all when I started dancing. I mean, I didn't know anything about it. And I feel like I want to give something back to students. And mm -hmm. it's nothing like, 
seeing the improvement of, of it's like having a child. There's nothing like hearing them say right. <laughs> the first words, you know. It's nothing like seeing a, a dancer develop into like this professional right. or not necessarily professional, but a good dancer. Uh, yeah. well, when you were here interviewing for the position at WVU, I saw mm -hmm. your teaching demonstration in jazz jazz class. Oh, okay. And those were intermediate to advanced students mm -hmm. and um, you turned them on. I mean, they, they got excited. It was fun. And vice versa. They kind of yeah. turned me on because I, I, I had been in BFA programs and mm -hmm. the, but these, these students here had more energy than some of those places where I taught right. previously. Right. You uh, know, it, and it was just exciting to see that. It is about, I, I agree with General, it is about giving back to a, an art form that has given I know me a, a, a lot. I mean, it's given me a, a wonderful career as a performer, and it's taken me uh, in a lot of uh, to very uh, exciting places and such opportunities. You know, a family. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife's mm -hmm. also a dancer, um, so it, it's a, it is in a way you kind of you feel like you owe to give it back and. Uh, giving it back but sharing with students. Yeah. You share knowledge, mm -hmm. you aren't really mm -hmm. teaching, you, you're, you're sharing what you have gotten out of this art and you're passing the torch very mm -hmm. much so, very much so. But cer certainly through the process of teaching class, I mean in the curriculum you have beginning jazz, beginning tap, beginning ballet, beginning modern dance, all those you know, right. genres, mm -hmm. and then you have intermediate, then you have advanced, so you're teaching technique as well. Yes. Right. And so that's a pretty rigorous curriculum, you know. If a student comes in and they want to be, you know, immersed in dance, they're do they're dancing all the time. Yeah, Martha Graham said it takes ten years to become a dancer, so yeah. it doesn't <laughs> happen in the microwave. I yeah. Yeah. So hopefully you start at ten, right? <laughs> <laughs> we started late, so we, start, yeah, yeah, exactly. we started late. We yeah. started college, even you know, a little later for me. So, um, I, you know, we've seen. Uh, I'm sure Janelle have seen has seen students like that that are very gifted but don't have that fire or drive, and they kind of mm -hmm. dwindle out mm -hmm. very fast. And there are some students that will work so hard, and they'll make it because that's you know they want that and they're passionate about that, and they'll make anything happen. It's it's wonderful to work with such students. Yeah. Well, there are many other reasons to study dance in in college, other than just wanting to be a dancer. Yeah. Can you talk about that for a, for a little bit? Uh, well, the, you know, there's, first of all, dance is, is a social, artful medium, and it brings people together. So, you know, in dance class, you're with other people. You have to interact with them. Uh, you have to have eye contact, where these days our culture, you know, everyone's with their eyes down there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's a collaborative art, teaches you about working with other people, not to mention discipline, self-discipline, yes. physical mm -hmm. discipline. Uh, you know, having right. a sc rigorous schedule, very organized. Um, so there's so many uh, creativity um, and and, sure. and so many aspects to dance that a lot of our st I know students have taken it into other areas. Um, and with our current program, that's the minor. Um, we've had students in civil engineering. We have students in interior design. I mean, they have a leg up on their competition because. Interior design students understand space. They understand how people move in the space. They're very much aware of mm -hmm. that. Um, aesthetics for someone in civil engineering designing something. They have a good eye for design. So there are a lot of different aspects that dance can help. And, and uh, well, and think of athletic training, sports psychology, yeah, definitely, nutrition, definitely. health, wellness. Therapy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those. There's a lot of different avenues for it for a dancer to experience beyond college and in different ways so um, well you mentioned the minor we have a minor program now at WVU right. in dance and we have gone through the motions we have a curriculum it's done and we're waiting for final approval for a major correct so what does that mean to the dance program I, I don't know we, we <laughs> talked about that you know we, we talked about Okay, it's going to be a BA and not a BFA, and, and, and I, we both came from a BFA program, but, but for us it doesn't matter. Even now when we're teaching minors, we still teach with a certain standard and level that mm -hmm. we ask for from our students. So they can go and be professional dancers if they want. We have a few graduates who are right now in New York City and trying to do that. Um, but um, 
you know, it's a flexible program where it gives you a, a good, solid education, and it focuses on dance. So if you want to take it into the arts administration or dance therapy or other areas, that'll work too. If you want to double major, that's fine. If you want to become a dancer and try your luck there, you can do mm -hmm. that. So BA really gives us that flexibility and, and uh, a good, solid foundation for a well-rounded education. Right. Yeah. But I also think it's, it's going to give those students who want to have a major in dance to finally have a, have a major in dance, right. have a BA right. in dance. I'll be the first one in West Virginia, which is That's right, and that's, and that's huge. I mean, there are a lot of students who want to study dance. I mean, they're determined. That's what they want to do. Yes. Most of them female, most likely, but they're, they're determined to be a dance major somewhere, and they have to leave West Virginia to do it uh, yeah. and, uh, until next year. And we, so. I know I'm part of a, a national organization where a small group of us of male edu dance educators are working to advocate for more male dancers to stay in the profession after they, they leave mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. performing uh, part of it and just become educators because we need no, uh, more role models and um, right. to show that you know, males can go on and dance as a profession, also in education. It's really right. important. Has a well, lot I, have, I have to say, you know, my, before I came to WVU, I was at an institution as a dean in Illinois for seven years, and they had a dance program there. And um, I only saw one male in a dance concert in seven years, and that was a wow. theater faculty member, actually, wow. who had dance experience. Hmm. So I come to WVU. And wow, there's a whole bunch of males out there. <laughs> this is fantastic. I mean, it's just not very common in, in academic dance programs. And so um, it, was, it was a pleasure to see that. And, and I hope and trust that that, that program is going to get larger with more males in it, especially as we have a major and especially when we institute a musical theater degree as well. Um, a lot of students are going to come and, and be attracted to the institution because they can really get theater experience vocal experience, musical theater experience, dance experience, and really train themselves, you know, in a more comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be fantastic. Yeah. So we'll have a lot more males walking around. Doesn't hurt to have two male faculty <laughs> members out there recruiting males too, right? <laughs> yes, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> we also have two adjunct faculty members teaching dance that's who great. are females, and that's great to have, have them it, it's involved really, at all. One teaches ballet, I think, yes. especially is ballet. Another and tap. Yeah, and a tap, yeah, that's great. But I, I think it's, it's healthy to have that combination. I know for me as a student, not to have the male role models or even male teachers, a lot of them, it, it was, was missing. I mean, mm -hmm. you get a very different energy in the class when it's a male teacher or a female, and, and everyone brings to the table something different, not that one is better than the other, but um, as male dancers, you know, we learn from seeing uh, most of the time, mm -hmm. and, and it's really mm -hmm. important to have that mix. So to have a really mixed uh, and varied uh, faculty is, is wonderful and very unique in a way. Mm -hmm. very unique. So, you know, I'm going to ask you this question as, as the head of the dance program. Um, so what's maybe, and maybe you know, both of you can chime in. I'm just curious sure. about the vision, the long-term vision. Where do you want to see that program 15 years from now? Well, we are also working on developing a, um, uh, a track in, in um, dance education and dance science. So like we spoke a, a moment ago, I, I think expanding dance and, and allowing it to grow in, and, and nourish and help students in other areas will be really uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And to really uh, establish dance as uh, a, an integral core subject within the academy um, where we can teach other um, disciplines and work together and collaborate will be wonderful. Um, so mm -hmm. yes, to have it as a place for students to gain experience as professionals in the career, as performers, but also to uh, help them in educational aspects if they want to move into other areas in dance, dance education, dance medicine, all those mm -hmm. areas. So mm -hmm. um, I hope it will grow in, in that in that aspect where we are more cross-disciplinary with other really mm -hmm. amazing disciplines around our campus because uh, mm -hmm. that's the kind of it seems that that's where things are going and people are more interested in a more of a, uh, a, a cafeteria sort of menu than being a major in one specific area because right. we have to be very flexible as you know in our culture as it changes and evolves uh, integrate more technology into our uh, dance as well in terms of 
using using technology and, and our dance studios, which we start already to do with with uh, mm -hmm. you know live feed and recording our work and and using iTunes right there in the classroom. It's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a whole different world than when we were in school. To create a dance mm -hmm. these days, it's right at your fingertips. Right. So it's really exciting what the possibilities are are out there. And, and yeah, Hopefully it's, you'll get there. It's it's certainly a, a whole nother way of, of expressing things. Very much so. Yeah. And I remember seeing, I think I actually, you circulated it to me. It was a, a um, molecular biology professor doing a lecture. Dance your PhD, yes. Right. And yeah. he brought out a bunch of a dance troupe, basically, to, right. to dance his lecture. <laughs> uh, it was quite fascinating. Yeah. And it's just an incredible way of... of, of Expressing, you know, the way molecules move and and different types of things, and it was fascinating to watch. Yeah, there's a whole movement now, and in, in, in dance education is to how to teach core curricula through movement and dance, because a right. lot of us learn in different ways and uh, visually and Correct. tactile, and so doing it and showing it through movement and experience it through, through movement sometimes. Uh, sinks in better than just reading about mm -hmm. it so um, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful wonderful medium to start working with so that's that's right. also another avenue to uh, investigate definitely so we've we've talked about some of the potential career choices or opportunities that a student would have if they came through a dance program um, you know do we have some of those success stories right now with some of our students? Definitely, we, we have uh, in terms of performing, uh, actually I was just in touch with an alum. She was dancing in the Charleston Ballet and, and she was the civ civil engineer major that minored oh, okay. in dance. And now she wants to come back. I believe she wants to go into a grad program f in civil engineering, but she's told me that she's back in town and she wants to have dance Continue still part dance. of her, her life. Right. And so, um, you know, we'll look at possibilities of maybe teaching a class and, right. and um, you know, with her experience, professional experience, that's, right. you can't buy that. Right. Yeah. So, uh, things like that, yeah. You know, we have the um, multidisciplinary studies degree where a student can come into the College of Creative Arts and, and take two minors inside the college and one outside the college right. and, and get a college degree. Um, they can take three minors inside the college and if they, if they so choose, but but you can really put together a curriculum, you know, write your own way through your interests mm -hmm. and, and really develop, you know, a career path for yourself. And we have any students that are currently doing that? And yes, we have, we have a few. We have art majors and dance minors. Mm -hmm. um, there are some um, different, different minors in the health and sciences. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we, we also have people who are uh, you know, med med majors. You know, pre med pre med majors, pre -med majors mm -hmm. right? And our minor in dance. I don't know how they do it. But those <laughs> are the, the great students. You know, they, they do everything. Um, right. But you know, they they're wonderful. They want to go. They want to be an orthopedic surgeon at some point. Exactly. Probably. I mean, exactly. That would be yeah. that'd be interesting. You know, but the kinesiology, you know, the nutrition, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, sports science, all those kinds of things. We have a recent grad who uh, went into nutrition and she studied that at WVU and minored in dance. We have an exercise mm -hmm. uh, physiology student who is currently in New York City trying t to get a, a performing career going but is also working uh, with a physical therapist at the Ailey Company who is a grad of WVU. So there are a lot of connections that mm -hmm. we're making mm -hmm. and it's really exciting to see that happen. Mm -hmm. It's connecting the dots. I mean, that's my philosophy. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's all out there. You just have to mm -hmm. make it happen mm -hmm. and be creative. And that's what dance teaches us to do. <laughs> right, so WVU, BA degree in dance, not a BFA. So that means essentially, I mean, for our audience, they're gonna be taking some more core courses in theater per se, some elective courses maybe outside theater and dance to, to, general to, education to courses. supplement general education obviously. And so they're going to be able to supplement their education a little bit with a dance major. Um, so the question becomes, you know, how, how important is it for a dancer to really be a stage animal? You know, the, the, the last thing I want to see when I go see a dance concert is people just going through the motions of technique. You know what I mean? They're, they they need to be performers. So, what are we? What? How is our dance program going to differ from, from the normal? I think I don't know. I think 
that part of a dancer is innate. Mm -hmm. And I know I don't th I don't think that's something you can really teach. You can bring it out of them. Bring it out. Bring it out of them. And so when you like say a dancer, started, you're really saying somebody who's going to be a dancer. I mean, it's not something that you can teach, that charisma, that stage savvy. Well, it's, it's there. It's part of the dance. It's part right. of the expression. And you can, I, mean, I think you can, as a teacher, you can enhance that or help mm -hmm. hone in on that and help bring it out of them. Sometimes they don't know it's there. Right. right. And they'll but discover it, too. Yeah, but I, I don't really think it's something you can teach. I don't know. Because they are. They so are. you're helping them discover that ability. Exactly. exactly. Right. We, we're exactly. peeling away the different layers and showing them, look, this is what you can do. We, we, you know, I know, and my philosophy is, is to to nurture their own artistic voice. I don't want them to imitate who I am as a dancer, right. um, and I want them to discover who they are as a dancer, as a performer, and, and as a, you know, at the core, it's, that's who they are as a person that will come up on stage and make be different than what people saw before. So um, we can only guide and help and push them mm -hmm. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We can't make it happen. Um, it's a two-way street. It's definitely a two-way street. Right. And because sometimes a lot of a lot of times in technique class, I think teachers are are so busy training in technique, they that they don't give the student a chance to bring that, like you said, that something mm -hmm. out that's inside because they they uh, stunt stunt their creativity. Mm -hmm. You know. And so let's we do three dance concerts a year. Mm -hmm. One at the end of each semester in the big dance concert in early, well, winter time. Right. And so what opportunities do students have to, to be creative as opposed to just interpreting one's choreography? <laughs> so do they, can they be choreographers themselves? Definitely. What opportunities do they have we, to really be well, creative? Well, first of all, in, in our program, we have two levels of choreography class. Um, and then they, students can choreograph for all three concerts. Mm -hmm. The large concert, there's a certain, you know, uh, adjudication process um, because we can't have everyone on the concert but uh, they can choreograph for any of the three shows mm -hmm. there's no problem anyone on campus and they choose whoever they want to be in their piece they're mm -hmm. responsible for the piece from they do the rehearsals H for Z yeah and so that teaches them something about leadership too right um, and how great. to run a, a, a creative process yeah okay excellent so wonderful opportunities for students you know, to be creative and connect yeah. with others and that's great. So we're looking forward to the dance major at WVU. Thanks so much for, for putting that together and, and coming on the show. So as we wrap this up for today, I want to thank our guests, Joel Kadar and General MacArthur Hambrick, for coming on the show. And please let me also thank the staff here at the Library Commission and Cultural Center for their work on this production. We really appreciate it. I also want to thank you for watching. And if you'd like any further information about the College of Creative Arts at WVU, please visit our website, ccarts.wvu.edu. You can also visit us on Facebook. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on Focus in the Arts.